one credit card, two credit cards, three credit cards, or a whole binder full of credit cards? That is the question we'll be answering today to help you better determine how many credit cards you should have in your overall strategy to really make sense and not also lead to crazy overwhelm as well. And perhaps best of all, we'll be doing this in a format that you may not have seen anywhere else. I've actually compiled a list of my main expenses for an entire year. That is all of 2023 by category. And I'm going to be running these numbers through different types of credit card setups, beginning with one credit card setups, two, three, and four credit card setups to see if there are any overall trends that develop and ultimately to help me decide how many cards I should be using and from which banks these cards come from. That way you'll be able to do the same for you or at least understand the mentality behind it all. Then towards the end when we wrap all this stuff together, I'm going to give you some extremely important key takeaways that pretty much change everything. You may actually never see your credit card strategy the same ever again. So let's jump into the details of my huge experiment. To recap here, on the left-hand side are all the main categories that I've chosen to represent in this video. Uh, so you can see everything from rental cars and travel types of things, at-home stuff like gas, shopping at Target, Costco, and the like. On the right-hand side are the individual amounts I spent across each one of these categories. The total of all of these was $53,863.97. And as we go along here, when you see healthcare and non-category, for the most part, I've included those kind of bundled together. And non-category means all the expenses that don't fall into a defined category above. So for me, as you'll notice here in the graphical representation, which is even easier to follow, my non-category spend is by far my biggest category. Therefore, finding a way to somewhat maximize that is going to be extremely important for me. Now, here's an example of how I actually did this experiment. So this is a one card setup example. This is the Chase Freedom Flats. It has the different point multipliers, five, five, three, three, one, and then the category for each one of those. For instance, it earns 5% back on different quarterly categories up to 1500 bucks per quarter. So I put my spend annually there, so I would match all those categories out. So $6,000 of spend times the multiplier of five equals 30,000 points, which is 300 bucks of cash back. Then once I had the number of points figured out, I then gave them a dollar value. So for cash back, you see on the far right there, CPP, that's cents per point. So uh, this is one cent per point, which is the value that Chase gives you for your points when redeemed for cash. And so I multiplied that value across my different amounts of points earned, and I got a dollar figure here. Basically, the formula was the number of points earned divided by 100 and then times the multiplier here. So in this case, it was just one. Therefore, I got $300 of cash back for my quarterly categories, $80.59 for restaurants, $41 and change for drugstores, so on and so forth. And whenever you see zero, that's because I would spend no dollars in that given category. Then jumping way forward here to give you an example of a multi-card setup, uh, here's the Chase Freedom Flats, the CSP or Chase Sapphire Preferred, the CFU or Chase Freedom Unlimited, and even the Amazon Prime Visa card. As we move forward here, when I show you multi-card setups, this will be a combined reward structure. So you'll notice I still have the 5X quarterly categories here from the Chase Freedom Flex. The Amazon comes from the Amazon card. Then we've got 3X on streaming from the Sapphire Preferred, etc. So they're all merged and combined. Anything that overlapped between cards, I discarded those entirely. Another crucial element to point out here as we set the stage for all of this to come is that we're going to cover both cashback setups and then also travel setups. And between the two, my CPP, or cents per point, will change between the two. And finally, whenever there's a card in the mix that is not going to be eligible for the elevated cents per point of redemptions here, I'm going to give it a flat value. In this example, it's the Amazon card. You can't combine Amazon points with Chase points. Therefore, it will always be one cent per point for the Amazon card. That's why you see here, my points earned, 
22,093 points off of $4,400 roughly of spend, but the average value for travel here is just 220 bucks. It's not going to be elevated because you can't get more value than that. I then ran these calculations for multiple one card setups, multiple two card setups, three and four card setups. You won't be able to read it here on the screen because there's so much involved with this and we're going to leave it at that. In short, this was a very methodical, math-driven and objective approach to see which card setups bring me the most rewards value. And the final piece of initial upfront groundwork here to let you all know is that I'm discarding annual fees and credits and benefits and all that crazy stuff because pretty much nobody will value those the same way. What we're interested in here is the raw earning potential of these cards. So let's officially begin. Beginning first here with the one card setups for cashback redemptions. What you're now looking at is a summary of all the math that I did behind the scenes if I were to put all of my spend on a single card for the entire year. And then redeem those points for cash back. So, the Amex Platinum card, we'll talk about round figures here to make it simple, gave me roughly $360 of value. The Amex Gold, roughly $445. Chase Freedom Flex, about $860. City Custom Cash at roughly $780. The Capital One Saver One at about $740. And the Capital One Venture X at 538 the reason why the Amex Platinum and Gold and Capital One Venture X have such low values are because you get such a poor value when redeeming for cash back. Amex gives you 0.6 cents per point, Capital One gives you 0.5, while the other cards either earn straight cash back, as in the case of the Saver One, or points that have a much better value for cash. So Chase and City gives you a full one cent per point. Therefore, for my annual spend, the best choice of choosing one card between these here that I have on the screen would have been the Chase Freedom Flex. Now let's add another card to the mitts. Here are the two card setups still redeeming for cash back. Keeping things consistent here will always move from left to right. So for a Team American Express with the Platinum card and the Gold card, I was able to get about $262. With the Chase setup here with the Freedom Flex and now adding the Sapphire Preferred, we've got almost $936. For City, we had about $923 with the Custom Cash and the City Premier. And for Capital One, we added the Saver One to the Venture X, giving me $588. For that hybrid model with Capital One, you actually convert all of your cash back from the Saver One into miles on the Venture X. You can't go the other way though. So for simplicity, we're assuming we uh, convert everything to miles and redeem for cash back. Again, that's why the value is so low at 0.5 cents per mile. Amet's still super low. Therefore, my winner overall will be the Chase setup with the Freedom Flats and Sapphire Prefer, with City pretty much right there behind it, almost fully equal. Moving into our three card setup, still for cash back. With American Express, I decided to add in the Blue Business Plus to complete the Amex Trifecta, as the Blue Business Plus earns double points on all purchases up to $50,000 of spend per year. That new trifecta setup yielded $742. With Chase, I added in the Freedom Unlimited, which earns one and a half points for all of my non-bonus or non-category spend. That trifecta yielded $1,117. With City, I added the double cash. That one also earns 2% back on every purchase. That is 1% when you buy and 1% when you pay your bill. So the value here had a nice jump forward into the first place spot at 1310. And finally with Capital One, there was no additional card from the same bank that made sense to add here. So I wanted to maximize another one of my big spend categories, which was Amazon. So I added the Prime Visa here. That trio yielded $765 of rewards. So you can see what I did here. I basically added the card to up my base spend or base earning rate that I can get here where all the other card setups earned one point per dollar for the most part if it was outside of a specific category. The exception was the Venture X, which earns double and everything. But Amex, Chase, City all earned one X as the base rate. So I added in that card that lifted it to one and a half 
with Chase or double for Amex and Citi to really uh, capture my large annual non-category spend and get more rewards fast. And since I had to draw the line somewhere, we're now going to conclude the cash back side here with a four card setup. Here's what I found. With American Express, Chase, and City, I decided to add in the Amazon Prime Visa to all of those setups because again, I spent a lot on Amazon and earning one or 2% was not great. So I bumped up Amazon to 5% with that card across the board there. And then with Capital One, since they already had the Prime card factored in from before, I then added the City Custom Cash here to give myself another 5% category. The results, therefore, are as follows. The hybrid Amex approach was $963 of rewards. The hybrid Chase at $1,272. Hybrid City had $1,442. And the hybrid Capital One at $884, roughly. Conclusion, at least for my spend, the city setup here is going to be the big winner when redeeming for cash back. All right, so between now and the end of this video, you're probably going to get a good idea of how to determine which credit card setup will be right for you next. But there's always that missing link of how do you manage multiple cards without all the headache. Well, one way I like to do so is with today's sponsor called Max Rewards. They have made my life a heck of a lot easier. Matt's Rewards is an app that allows you to keep track of multiple credit cards, rewards, benefits, and more all in one place. This includes seeing your balances both in dollars and rewards across all of your cards together and individual cards. You can then switch over to the summary view and see how much you've been spending by week, month, and year. And this goes not just for the dollars you've spent, but also for the rewards that you've earned as well, which is a great feature at the gold level. Then whether you're transacting close to home or on a trip, Matt's Rewards can also also recommend the best card to use to earn the most amount of rewards either by location near you or by spend category. Also at the gold level, Matt's Rewards can activate all of your card linked offers like Amex offers, Chase offers, and more, and it does so automatically. That way you can earn even more cash back or rewards without even having to think about it on top of your regular rewards. By the way, if you ever wondered how much value you got on a card from the rewards and benefits compared to the annual fee, Matt's Rewards can show you that too. So if you'd like to try Matt's Rewards, either the totally free version or the elevated gold level with even more features, check out the link down below in the description where you can get a one week free gold trial plus a one month discount as well, either by using the link directly or by downloading the app and using the code MARKR. Now back to the rest of the video. Now, I know many of you out there would much prefer to save a bunch of money on travel rather than having cash back rewards. So for all of you out there, we're going to do these same exercises that we just covered on the cash back side, but this time with much higher valuations for points on the travel side. Again, using my entire annual spend to see which setup would make the most sense to me. And of course, apply the same principles to find out which setup would work best for you too with your own numbers. Beginning first with my one card setups for travel. I got the same six cards earlier, but this time bumping up the valuations using an average value of 1.7 cents per point every time I could use transfer partners and whenever uh, transfer partners were not an option, we just use the standard cash back rate. So putting all of my annual spend through a single card, this time the Amex Platinum gives me $1,019 roughly of value here to put towards, for example, flights. The Amex Gold beat it out at roughly 1,260. Then the Chase Freedom Flex, City Custom Cash, and Capital One Saver One all had their same previous values that we saw earlier with cash back because none of those give you access to the full list of transfer partners on their own. So it's still 860, 780, and 740 roughly respectively. But then look at what happened when I put all of my spend through the Capital One Venture X and redeem for travel using transfer partners. On average, the value I would get here was $1,831. That literally destroys every single other card here on the screen and compared to cash back, it is roughly three times more value. So that one is really showing you here the power of even putting all your spend through a card that earns double miles or 2%, for example, on all of your purchases. Let's move on to two card setups still redeeming for travel. And it's at this point when I can use a valuation for points of 1.7 cents on average across all of these different issuers because every single setup has access to transfer partners right now. 
So with Amex, with the Platinum and the Gold, 1310. With the Chase setup of the Freedom Flats and CSP, 1590. Custom Cash and Premier yielded 1568. And Capital One, roughly $2,000 even when I added the Saver One with the Venture X. Remember previously how that was only around 1800 and now it's about 2000 So even though the Capital One Saver One is an absolute beast on its own with so many rewards multipliers, it does not add a huge amount of extra value when I'm already earning double on everything with just the Venture X. The result here is that Amex for me still trails at the very end in terms of raw rewards earning power. We've got uh, Chase and City again pretty darn equal and Capital One significantly above all the others with the Capital One Duo setup as we like to call it. But now the tide starts to turn a bit when we have three card setups redeeming for travel. Just like we saw before, I now added the Blue Business Plus to American Express, the Freedom Unlimited to Chase, the Double Cash to Citibank, and the Amazon Prime Visa for the Capital One setup. Now also realize that the bars look dramatically split here by a high degree of margin, but look at the access on the far left-hand side. Now the increments along the dollar ranges there are only $100 each, so the spreads are a lot smaller than you might think. But at least it makes the results very visually apparent. Now we have Chase in dead last place, for me at least, with roughly $1,900 of rewards earned. In third place, we now go over to Capital One here with a little over 2,000, so $2,071. Amex is in second place, which it was trailing, if you remember earlier, at 2103 and then city jumped up from what was previously third place now to first place at two thousand two hundred and twenty seven dollars quite a difference and now looking at the final part of my experiment with four card setups redeeming for travel once again we have a very dramatic graph but again look at my increments here on the left hand column now all of my dollar jumps are only fifty dollars each so even though the dis disparity looks huge it really is not Amets was my first place at 23.24. City was in second at 22.98. Capital One in third at 21.19. And then Chase in last place at 2008. So we're really talking about tens of dollars or maybe barely even a hundred bucks here uh, between these. So even last place at Chase to first place Amets was barely even 300 bucks. And that's not, again, a monthly earning rate. This is, of course, of, across the entire year. So going a full year and missing maybe 300 bucks is not that big of a deal. Or for some people, maybe it actually is. It just depends on how involved you want to be in this game and how much you're willing to put into it effort-wise in terms of maximizing every single part that you can. And now for the part you've all been waiting for, my results. For the cashback redemptions using a one card setup, the Chase Freedom Flex came in first for me. Then for two cards, it was the Chase Duo. Three cards was the uh, City Trifecta. And then four cards was the City Trifecta with the Amazon Prime card added. And above each one of those, you can also see in green font, the incremental additional uh, rewards value that I got moving from one setup to the next. And then of course, I also showed below in red font, the annual fees involved with running each setup. Directly above that annual fee in white bold font was the amount of rewards that I earned without the annual fees subtracted from them. Then moving down to the second half of the screen for travel, a one card setup uh, that worked best for me was the Capital One Venture X. Using two cards was adding the Saver One with the Venture X or the Capital One Duo. For three cards, it was the City Trifecta again. And for four cards was the American Express Trifecta with the Amazon Prime card. But do note the outrageously high annual fees to run that setup. But all this leads us now to some key takeaways that will be extremely instrumental in helping you decide whether you should have a one card setup, two, three, four, five, or 95 card setup. So check this out first of all in terms of understanding a really big principle that will guide you uh, moving forward here. It's called the law of diminishing returns, which all to say is LDR for short. Here's what it says, and I put it in as simple terms as, as I possibly could. As you increase one variable, as an example, the number of credit cards, while keeping all the other variables the same, 
the incremental gain you get starts to decrease. In other words, after a certain point, each additional card you add gives you a smaller amount of additional rewards. And there's a great visual of this here on the right hand side of the screen showing you this red curve where as you move from the bottom corner left all the way up to that first black dotted line, you are increasing your returns with each additional credit card you add because you're covering perhaps a new rewards category. Or you may be adding, you're adding a 2% card where all of your non-category spend earned only 1% before that. This is where your jumps in rewards are typically in the hundreds of dollars. However, you see the point there in the middle with the blue dotted line. That's the point of maximum yield. In other words, your reward sweet spot. And then once you start to move beyond that sweet spot point, you get into your negative returns. Now, some of this may still be positive. Maybe you earn an additional $25 a year by adding your SITS card, but some of those cards may have annual fees or benefits that you did not actually use, so there was lost value. So let's say you gain $25 more rewards, but you added a $95 annual fee. That would be one example of perhaps you're actually losing value at that point. So let's discuss some key takeaways here to wrap it all together that may actually change the entire game for you completely once you really internalize these semi-truths. Number one, the reward sweet spot, which as we call mathematically, the point of maximum yield, for most people, likely occurs between two and four cards. Number two, you'll see a larger additional return with each new card as long as the new card represents a large percent increase from what you already had. As an example, if you had a category that was earning only 1% and now you add a new card that bumped it to 5%. Additionally, if this new card you add to your setup covers a category in which you spend a lot of money, that will make a big difference as well. For example, an area in which you spend thousands of dollars, not just tens or hundreds. And lastly, if the new card has a small or even $0 annual fee. That way there's nothing really cutting into the rewards that you earn throughout the year. Takeaway number three, which is really the inverse of all this, but to really drive this point home, you'll see a smaller additional return with each new card you add as long as the new card represents a small percent increase from what you already had. So if you were earning 2% and you add a new one that earns 3%, that may not make a very big difference. Also, if a new card covers a category in which you spend only very little of your annual budget, and lastly, if the new card has a moderate to high annual fee, which may significantly cut into the overall rewards value that you earned, provided you don't use all the benefits or credits that help you justify it. Takeaway number four, once you have your total rewards value in dollars, as you saw throughout the video, then what you want to do is add in the value of additional benefits and credits you'll use. Then subtract out the cost of the annual fees to arrive at your true card setup value. Again, that's the part I left out of this video, A, to make it very simple and broadly applicable to more people because not everybody will use every benefit. Some people may value certain benefits with a different dollar figure, so on and so forth. So run the numbers and the math for your tastes preferences and what you actually will use. Takeaway number five, always keep in mind the hidden cost in time, hassle factor, or stress of managing multiple cards, rewards currencies, due dates on your bills, and your benefit expirations, all that type of stuff. Takeaway number six, for many people, it's highly advantageous to have a card that earns two ads or 2% on all purchases. Look at that screenshot that I cut out from my visuals earlier in the video. Just the Capital One Venture X alone when redeeming for a travel was unbelievable. That yielded over $1,800 of value for me, not including any sort of welcome offer, not including any credits or benefits, and almost most importantly, I also did not use any of the elevated multipliers like 10x or 5x through the Capital One Travel Portal. That was just a straight up double on everything, set it, forget about it, and pretty much look what happened. It was an unbelievable amount there because all the other cards with two, three, four card setups, none of those got beyond like 23 or $2,400. So that was a major rival to the multi-card setups. However, I will wrap up with this. Takeaway number seven is to always keep your rewards preference in mind, cashback versus travel. 
Now you see the visual on the screen of this same Venture X card, putting all my spend through the double X earning multiplier, but redeeming for cash back. That only gives me a flat 0.5 cents per mile, which represents only about a third of the value I could get when redeeming strategically for travel using transfer partners. So that one small nuance right there can make or break your rewards based on what you want to earn. And now it's your turn. Go run the numbers and find the cards that are best suited for you. Also, while you're doing that, you might want to be aware of these sits really uncomfortable credit card truths because as you get into the rewards game a little bit deeper, there are some things that might shock you. Go watch it after this one if you want to avoid some really unpleasant surprises.